Next up, we have our squat variations. One day a week you'll be doing bilateral squatting on two legs. One day a week you'll be doing unilateral squatting on one leg. Right now, let's go through a progression for the bilateral squat. First, we need to be able to get into proper position and squat with our body weight before we need to add any weight. Feet, our shoulder width is slightly wider. Toes can be out just a little bit. We're going to make sure every time we squat that our chest is forward and our shoulders are back, squeezing a quarter between our shoulder blades, big chest. This will keep our spine flat in the upper half of our back. And this will become particularly important if you get to the point where you're loading your spine with weight. Okay? We will break at the hips and the knees, driving our hips back, and our knees will go forward slightly, but that's not a point of emphasis. Our knees should go forward only as far as they need to go based on your limb length and your lower body. So again, big chest, shoulders back. When you're doing a body weight squat, often we throw our hands out to achieve some balance. We stay on our heels all the way down to parallel or lower and then back up. Okay. You notice I was emphasizing sitting back on my heels to the point my toes came off the ground. That's really not a particularly good thing. You want to have a tripod foot for the heel the outer half of the ball of your foot and the inner half of the ball of your foot are all three heavy on the ground. Okay, so your heels should never come off the ground, but neither should your ball of your foot or even your toes. We should have good grip on the floor with our feet. Again, we break at the hips and knees simultaneously, sitting back heavy on the heels and come back up. As we're proficient at that, we can begin to load the movement. We can load it with a Dumbbell held in the goblet position at the chest. Sit down and back and up. Same technique. We can use a kettlebell in the same way. Holding it by the horns is most common. Some people do hold it by the bell itself. Same technique. And then we can also progress to using two kettlebells in the front squat position, big chest, shoulders back, now some of the athletes have trouble keeping their heels properly in contact with the ground. Usually that is going to be because of ankle stiffness. The prehab and activation exercises will begin to help with that. But in the meantime, we can help them do a better quality squat by using our heel wedges. These are designed to help them keep their heels down so they can press through the heels and maintain that stable position. So again, we're elevated on the heel lift and can do all the same squats. But again, most novice lifters to have a slightly wonky squat without the heel lift, they're going to have a pretty high quality squat comparatively with the heel lift. Now, from here, we can progress into a front squat with the barbell. Here, getting into the squat rack and executing all the same technique previously discussed. And of course, to the barbell back squat. Although it is debatable if this will be necessary for most high school basketball athletes. There's a little more technique involved here in terms of setting the shelf of your shoulder, where to place the bar. There are variations, including the low bar, high bar, etc. I would stick to the goblet squat until the athlete can no longer hold the weight. When his arms become the limiting factor, we go to the front squat and then eventually to the back squat. Now, we are also fortunate enough to have a belt squat machine. This is an excellent option for an athlete that has a back injury or shoulder or arm injury. And for an athlete who might be having an unusual amount of trouble 
getting good at performing a safe squat otherwise. This is going to allow them to be in a safer position with an upright spine. It won't put pressure on their upper body to hold the weight. So we wear the belts around our hips. We hook it in. We grab the handles. Set our feet, same as before. Stand up. And it will unlock the lever. We can use our hands to help us sit back on our whole foot, staying off the balls of our feet. Getting into that full deep squat. Ready to back it, we go now. The chain is adjustable. Okay, so the shorter the athlete, the shorter the chain will need to be in order for them to achieve a full depth squat using the belt squat machine. 